So we learned something kind of interesting lately. 1,000 NVIDIA GPUs per SuperPod. Yep, 1,000 each goes to the SuperPod that powers the GeForce Now experience that we've been talking about for the last several days, the one with the new RTX 3080 tier. Is this where really all the RTX 3080 GPUs are going? Let's discuss what may be going on here. Hey guys, Tiago with Classical Technology. Remember to subscribe and smash that like button. We talk a lot about PC hardware, GPUs, as well as the general market, what to expect about you know computer parts when things are getting better. So let's talk about today's subject. People have been complaining that, especially the RTX 3080, which we could say is sort of like the Halo GPU for NVIDIA, because its price to performance at $699 when it was originally announced really made people very excited. It's still a great GPU a year later, but of course we've come to hit a little bit of a problem in that we absolutely can't find them, and when we do, the MSRP price is absolutely outrageous, and not to mention the secondhand scalper pricing. So for the last year, it's been pretty much a blame game as to why there aren't enough 3080 specifically. Of course, this is a problem that's uh, really systemic to both the RTX 3000 and the AMD GPUs, but the 3080 seems particularly egregious because it was such a titillating and exciting GPU, and it seems to be one of the most difficult ones to get. I bet you'll probably know more people with RTX 3090s, 3070s, 3080 Ti's, and even AMD uh, GPUs than you would likely with some of the 3080s, especially the ones that were bought at MSRP. So the last year, plenty of blame has gone around. Is it the crazy gamer demand that's been driving RTX 3080s into extinction? Is it the crypto miners? People love to blame them as well. Or is it everybody's friendly neighborhood scalper buying up all of the 3080s? And actually all three are very true, coupled with manufacturing issues that have been experienced throughout the last year. Of course, that's really a valid reason. But today we're gonna talk about a possible fourth reason and I just want to make clear this is just sort of a fun speculation I'm not sure if this really would affect it or not even though you can make the argument that resources could be spent on more you know RTX 3080 or 3000 series GPUs and we don't really know anything concrete aside from what Nvidia has told us just a little bit of speculation just the optics of it all with the GeForce Now experience lack of 3080s and then having this service that's specifically 3080 level seems a little bit you know funny to discuss at least so I just want to make that clear. Nothing, you know, you don't need your tinfoil hat or anything like that. Just fun to speculate on potential issues aside from the usual, you know, gamer, crypto miner, scalper, uh, you know, general market type of scarcity issues and manufacturing delays. So recently we've been talking at length about NVIDIA's new GeForce Now experience, their cloud streaming service. The interesting thing is that they recently announced the RTX 3080 tier. They specifically call it a 3080 tier. Basically, you're going to get 3080 level performance with ray tracing, 1440p up to 120 frames per second, or up to 4K if you're going to use one of the NVIDIA shields or a supported Android device. It all sounds pretty good on the server. Purpose, right? Well, there are certainly many issues. I would say watch my recent videos on this. Um, a lot of people are very much against this because it feels like you're renting an RTX 3080 or a GPU in order to be able to enjoy these games. And of course, the really huge problem here is going to be the latency. Not everybody's going to have a fast internet connection where they can play without any issues. If they can figure something out where you could maybe download a lot of the game or something like that so it goes smoother, maybe the implementation may change. But for now, it's certainly a big issue. People that have the priority service now, which is a, a 2080 level type of you know a, a rig. It's not exactly based out of 2080s. I think they use you know many clustered together sort of you know workstation class GPUs in order to be able to provide that experience. But on this 3080 level, they're using what it looks to be some type of like ampere structure in these what they call super pods. And what really drew my attention is we don't know exactly how many super pods there are, but they said that each one has 1,000 GPUs each, and these are based on NPR as far as we know. So while NVIDIA calls this the RTX 3080 tier, we don't know if it really is a 1,000 3080s per super pod, but they said a 1,000 GPUs, you know, kind of grouped together. Who knows what type of, you know, a structure that they formed. They just told us the basic specs to expect, but we can assume that if it's a 1,000 3080s per super pod or not, those are definitely silicon 
recon and resources that could maybe have been applied towards more manufacturing for actual physical cards. Now, the interesting thing here is if we juxtapose a thousand GPUs per SuperPod next to not having any physical real 3080s on the street, next to the GeForce Now Experience, which is like, you know, a cloud streaming service, basically like a Netflix, not only for your games, but for your hardware as well. You're basically renting out an RTX 3080. So it's not just, you know, games as a service, it's hardware as a service, which is fairly new in the industry. It's not exactly like Netflix. Certainly a very interesting difference. I guess the idea is whatever you see on your screen, doesn't matter if your computer is producing those graphics or if a supercomputer or a super pod is producing that gameplay from thousands of miles away as long as it looks good and the latency is low. Technically, that's supposed to be sort of the idea anyway. So regardless, if it actually is a thousand exact, you know, 3080 GPUs in there or not, could be something else. The key idea here is even those resources, that time implementation to put that together could have certainly gone to, you know, manufacturing or something else. And when we put together the fact that GeForce Now experience is really not that popular with gamers especially you can see the vivid feedback that people gave me on the last video when I asked what they thought of this service people don't want to rent their GPU they don't want latency they don't want somebody else to control literally what would be their hardware their access to be able to play these games if you have a you know a slower computer either you use a streaming service like this or as people prefer have the real hardware in there that they own they can do with it as they wish they don't need a fast internet connection they can play single player offline basically for all anybody cares. So that's really a vital difference. If I asked any of my viewers if you would want an RTX 3080 level streaming service, if you want NVIDIA to focus on that so they can rent or subscribe to this yearly plan, which by the way is about $200 a year, if they want that, or they wanna be able to get an actual 3080 or even a 3060 or at least a real modern GPU, I think almost every single person would choose to get the real GPU if NVIDIA moved those resources into the GPUs. Now, NVIDIA definitely brands themselves as the, you know, the gamers being the core market. Gaming is very important, but the last several years, they focused a lot of attention on AI, machine learning, things like that, which, you know, of course, those are very important as well. Gaming isn't really the only thing. And of course, AI, artificial intelligence, and, you know, machine learning, those are very important for humanity as well. Game isn't the only thing but they certainly do brand themselves as really being very gamer friendly but of course it's obvious a lot of resources goes to these type of super pods this isn't the first one of course they, as I've seen with their AI super pods thousands of people work on these projects so they're massive large-scale projects that take up a lot of resources both in terms of manpower as well as in raw resources so with a huge shortage going on you know that recently they've been building this up in order to release this RT x3080 tier now my point here is geforce now it's not very popular in the regular market if people have gpus if gpus are abundantly available nobody's going to sign up for this aside from a couple of users that for whatever reason maybe they're casual gamers or an enthusiast that just wants to test it out like in my case i just want to test it out to see what a streaming service provides compared to a real GPU, but I'm probably not going to use it because I prefer to use a real GPU. It's just after I quench my th curiosity, I'm going to move on. But some people may like that type of service if they want to play it. You know, maybe they're somewhere where they don't have a powerful computer and it's something that, you know, it is, it is something that could work to that benefit, not to take away completely from that type of service. We focus more on the price to performance and sort of the utility it would have, especially for gamers and enthusiasts. And of course, if it's taken away resources from actual gaming GPUs, that's when people may get a little bit miffed about it, just because if we had an abundance of GPUs, nobody would care if they're building super pods with 1,000 GPUs each, and who knows how many super pods there are. Anybody's guess, but I'm guessing they're going to need a large amount, because something else that they do on this RTX 3080 tier, you have to basically like pre-order it and be part of their priority program, and it says that it's going to be sort of a limited release, or at least they're going to be limited spots. So I think with that strategy they're definitely trying to create some type of like a scarcity mindset i mean certainly they see what the rtx 3080 has done to to people if anybody sees an rtx 3080 for
for a couple of hundred over MSRP, I bet you they'll buy it compared to two or three times the price that generally you find it for. So if they say that this RTX 3080 level, very interesting that they call it that. They did not have to call it a 3080 level. It doesn't even make sense. Their other level is priority. Like how does this make sense that it's a 3080 level? Why not a 3090 or a 3070? Makes absolutely no sense until you look at the entire picture and you see the 3080 really is the GPU that everybody would love to have. Price to performance king, it's really the highest end GPU that makes sense for most gamers. 3090 is a completely different beast. 3080, you could say, is their flagship reasonable GPU. So very interesting they call it that. And then they start to sort of artificially limit what this virtual service may be. It means that they're either expecting a ton of demand from people because they can't get a GPU, or they're using it to sort of drive up the rarity and scarcity and make people actually want to go to the service because they know it's a bit of a hard sell. Nobody really wants to rent or subscribe to a GPU unless it was like a perfect system, which it is not. You're going to have many internet issues. It's kind of a pipe dream right now because people's internet in general just aren't that great. And chances are, if you live somewhere with really good internet that would take advantage of this, most likely you may have even been able to get a GPU so far. So the user that they're targeting here, not too sure, but they're definitely Definitely making it seem like it's going to be hard to get into with, you know, limited availability, pre-order, sign up now, all those words, and then using the 3080 to be able to draw people into it. Very, very interesting. And this is something that absolutely only works if there are no real 3080s out in the market. Like I said, you get a real GPU, you're never going to look at this service. This is going to be maybe for people that have not been able to get a GPU and they just need something. So Nvidia likely is planning to catch a lot of those people because after all, wouldn't they love to have a subscription service that they can count on for their yearly revenue? Generally, it'd be great to add that to their portfolio, to their bottom line, like they have in a smaller amount with the you know previous tiers. But if this can be as important as the RTX 3080 physical card, imagine how great that would be for them. Look at Netflix. Basically, they just sell subscriptions and they make a ton of money and then they can turn around and make more content and become dominant in the industry. If Nvidia can sell GPUs and sell services like this, hardware as a service, software as a service, as they partner with different places, that's going to be certainly very interesting. And at least in this sense, it makes sense for the GPU drought to continue from their perspective, because if they're selling all the hardware cards that they can get, they're going to get much more attention on this virtual service, which generally would not be that popular. So you could put your tinfoil hat on and say that the stars are aligning perfectly, but it is the best case scenario for a service that people really don't like too much. If people can't get a GPU, they may think, well, I don't like this, but maybe I'll try it for six months until I actually get a GPU, at least they'll have some type of a passable performance or something like that. Certainly does seem a little bit funny that resources maybe could be going towards more GPUs, but they're still putting them in these type of super pods for a service that, let's face it, nobody really wants unless they're really forced into it because of not getting a GPU. All right, guys, so let me know what you guys think. I pretty much know what you guys think because it's what I think. This is kind of funny right now, so we'll see how it develops. This service may just be lukewarm and nobody may really get it and it may just go away anyway or if the shortages continue for a long time the next few years this could be something that we start seeing more and more of especially if nvidia thinks it's going to be something that's successful so remember to subscribe smash that like button and i'll see you guys on the next video